On tonight's episode of the Infinite Loop Show, we mount a lion. Well, we mount a disc image. Of mountain lion. On the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, everybody, from not the Apple campus in Cupertino, California. <laughs> I am Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coughlin. <laughs> and this is the Infinite Loop Show, where we talk about Macs, Macs, iOS, and Macs. <laughs> and don't forget Macs. And don't forget Macs. The big news today, as most of everybody should know, unless you've been living under... 10.8 is out. <laughs> the what? 10.8 is out. 10.8 Mountain Lion is out. It's official and yes, do you love it? Yes, and download it from yeah. the App Store. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I'm a developer, so I've been playing with it for uh, a little while. The the GM, and that's what he yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I actually like it a lot more than Lion. It's just got a better feel to it. Yeah, we kind of um, discussed it a little bit when the developer preview came out, and we you know kind of gave our thoughts on it initially mm-hmm. um and i i haven't found that a whole lot has changed i mean it's obviously polished up finally but yeah the way it's it supposed to be it's like what lion was supposed to be mm-hmm. you know like lion was this teeny step on the road to <laughs> mountain lion kind of what they say like windows 7 is or vista yeah windows 7 was what vista should have been vista should have been exactly yeah all right, so I you know I don't know how much time you want to spend on talking about mountain lion specifically because there are actually news items to talk about. But what what about mountain lion do you like the best so far? Um, probably Safari Six, which oddly <laughs> enough nice. you don't need mountain lion to get. You can actually download it for lion um, from Apple's website, mm-hmm. and um, oddly enough. There's a uh, a link missing on that page for a certain other operating system. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Windows. <laughs> um, I thought you were going to say Snow Leopard. Oh no! Well, um, you can probably still download it for Snow Leopard. I don't know about Leopard, Maybe. but Snow Leopard's probably in the cl- in the club of cool kids who can run <laughs> Safari Six. Um. There are reports saying that you can still download Safari Six if you know the direct link on the for Windows, mm-hmm. but it's not. There's no links on the Safari page on Apple's website. Yeah, and so people are freaking out, going, "Oh my God, iTunes is next!" Da da da, you know. But no. if Microsoft, I'm thinking, if Microsoft is saying, "Hey, you know, we're not going to develop Office 14 for Mac." Mm-hmm. What if Apple starts retaliating? I, well, the difference is that I don't think not making Safari for Windows is as big of a deal to Windows <laughs> users as Office 14 not coming out for the Mac. <laughs> because Microsoft well, will just say, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, we're not going to make Safari for you. We're so not going to make an updated version of Internet Explorer for you people either. Take that. But that was like- Microsoft said, sorry, uh, no more IE for Mac. Everybody was like, fine, okay. good. <laughs> Take it, you know. We don't want it anyways. Uh, one of the things I like the most is the Notification Center, which uh, which slides your desktop to the left a little bit, and then all your notifications are shown there. It's very nice. Uh, it has that growl-type interface where an, a message will pop up in the um, in the upper upper right hand corner of your screen and say here's your tweet or here's your email or here's something so i've been having uh, a good time with that and messages messages is probably uh, also my favorite thing yeah the two really integrate well um notification center and messages just before the show as we were you know chatting through messages um and i've got like messages is in the background and i've got a ton of windows covering everything and so normally all you would get maybe is like a little bounce icon in the dock or a sound to (laughs) notify you that person is talking back to you yeah you know and a lot of times that's missed conversations but with the notification center like that little drop down comes over 
all of your windows and then kind of slides away. So it's like you get that notification, you know, but it's not totally interrupting everything. Mm -hmm. It's just nice and I mean, those days when the mail icon used to bounce and bounce and bounce and just annoy the piss out of you until you finally said, okay, okay, what? What do you want? It's like that guy who kept poking you, poking you, poking you, poking you. Um, So the notification is a much uh, more elegant way of saying, look, there's something new for you. Um, So far, what I've seen is there are tweets. There are, let me see, it's it's tweets. mail um app store updates calendar uh messages uh what else am i missing here there's got to be something else that i'm missing i don't don't, and i wrote about it this morning you can actually see the the in system preferences you get a notification center preference pane that's almost identical to the one in settings on ios and you can choose like banner alerts none and and what you want each app to do Mm -hmm. as far as you know a badge icon or play play a sound or just get the hell out of here yeah um so you have calendar facetime game center mail messages reminders safari uh that's all i have right now i don't know how you can add more to this list i think developers can because Uh, why not so i'm I'm gonna have to because yeah i don't see it's like system, like if an update, like I would think updates would be in there, but I don't see it. Oh, well, maybe it's just done automatically. Maybe it's just one of those things that you can't turn off. Like there's an OS update. Why would you want to yeah. turn that off? Speaking of which, uh, system updates are now in the handled by the Mac App Store. Yeah. So if you click on system update from the Apple menu, it'll actually bring up the Mac App Store in that updates uh, portion where like all the app updates would be and mm-hmm. then there's a set section up at the top for system updates. Yeah, so, so that's- yeah, it's good. Um, God, other things that I like about it. Let's see. Um, I haven't really had a, a chance to play with uh, PowerNap, which is the ability for your computer to update while it's sleeping. That's because nothing has come out yet <laughs> to make that happen. <laughs> Um, dictation, I haven't tried. I want to. I just haven't had a chance to, to give it a shot. Tomorrow or something, I think. Yeah. Um, but all in all, it it has, a like you said, it has a better feel to it than Lion Dead. Um, unfortunately for me, as I've said on the show before, it will not run on my Mac Pro, not without getting a new video card and flashing the video card and... Um, I looked at the number of steps that you have to take in order to do it apart from the video card, and I went, eh, it's not worth it. Mm. Um, it. It runs on my MacBook Pro, so I may or may not try to find a way of, of turning my MacBook Pro into my main machine or just wait until... Mm. Uh, there are rumors, um, it's not in our show notes, but I saw yesterday that there are rumors that um, new iMacs are coming in October. Yeah, I saw that rumor too, and I forgot to put it. It was something else too. Um, along with the IMAX, there is another rumored update mm-hmm. um, to the line, and that that was uh, going to come out in October as well. Which I don't know if they didn't. It seems to me like if they couldn't bring those updates, you know, with the rest of them in June, mm-hmm. like what would what for? Or five more months really give them, yeah, you know, know. If it was, I, that doesn't seem like that big a time difference. So I don't know. Yeah. Usually, I mean that um, October announcement, it, it's either going to be like the music iTunes, but that's generally in September. Mm-hmm. And if it's October, that's kind of become the new iPhone announcement, and. I don't know, unless they just kind of like throw it out there really quick and get on with the show, I would think <laughs> if they'd want to, you know, cater that whole announcement to the new iPhone. Yeah. And if it's be like we're, we're hearing, then it may need a whole show. Well, it could be one of those silent upgrades where they just say, oh, you know, here's the new iPhone. It's lovely. It's wonderful. And by the way, they're new IMAX. Something like that. Like, I bet they'll do that with the new iMacs. Like when they update the MacBook, or not the Mac, the, the Mac Pros, it's just all of a sudden there's a new tag on the exactly, store. Exactly. Don't say anything. It's just all of a sudden new on the store. So and that's they fine. might do that. 
And when they do that, I will probably get one. I'll get a nice i7. Um, Run down the store. Yeah, I will. <laughs> well, I will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, well, here's the thing. Um, I don't know if we have it. Do we have it in the show notes? Um, well, sort of. We kind of do. i tell you what. Can we skip around a little bit? I, I have been the whole time. No, we haven't? Okay. <laughs> Um, you have in the in our show notes about there's a, a website called RoaringApps.com, which mm-hmm. tells you which apps will work and will not work on both Line and Mountain Line. The reason I bring this up is because as a podcaster, that I do two main things with my Macs. One is um, working um, as a developer with Xcode. That doesn't really matter uh, which machine I run it on. But the second thing is is obviously podcasting, and in order to do that, there is there are some pieces of software that are necessary to pull audio from different apps and then feed them into GarageBand. And because of the yeah. new way, and we've talked about this on the show before, so I'm not going to rehash it, but because of the new ways that Apple uh, forces certain rules upon developers, there are some podcasting necessity apps that don't work anymore, uh, specifically Wiretap Pro. Now, Audio Hijack Pro apparently does work. Uh, so mm. I, I'm going to have to take a look at that and find out what happened. But but this is, this is the only barrier for me for buying a new machine and going straight to Mountain Lion is that um, yeah. right now the way that I do the live shows is that I don't depend on these apps anymore. I figured out a way to do it with a second machine. So it may not be a problem for me, but in the future if I ever have this problem, it, it may become an issue. Um, if I can keep this machine, the MacBook Pro, uh, with Snow Leopard, or at least have a partition with Snow Leopard, and then use this machine for pulling audio from other apps, then that may be a, a good solution. So there are some people that I know, um, that uh, podcasters that are stuck in Snow Leopard for that very reason. Hmm. So. Well, I heard Leo say yesterday he was updating all his machines the minute Mountain Lion came out, and he didn't <laughs> care because he's a rebel. <sighs> so, okay. Uh, oh, we'll see how we'll see how it works. All right. So <laughs> since I bounce around too much, I want you want you pick up now yeah, and right. get um, us back on track yeah, here. So if you haven't um, upgraded yet, um, a you're crazy, and b um, if you're kind of you know wondering what's going to work, what's not going to work, like you said, RoaringApps.com is a great resource um, for finding out if all of your apps are going to be compatible or if there's going to be some stragglers, what have you. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to make a, a mountain lion thumb drive, uh, it's the same as the lion procedure if you did that last year. Um, once you download the actual disk image from the store, mm-hmm. you can actually do a right click and view contents and pull the image out to make a thumb drive. Mm-hmm. After once you actually install Lion, that all or Mountain Lion, that all goes away, just like Lion. So you have to re-download it. I mean, big deal, but it's a pretty painless and simple process. Um, but there's that, and mm-hmm. um, Apple also pushed down updates to um, through the App Store, obviously, yep. to iLife and iWork apps, both for Mac and iOS, to work better with the new iCloud and Mountain Lion integrations. Oh, really? Oh really? Oh. Yeah. So, uh, lots of updates today, not just OS updates. Damn, because I'll bet. You know, see, I, I I can't use iCloud on Snow Leopard. I'm gonna have to mm-hmm. do some serious work this weekend on seeing how well I can podcast with Mountain Lion. Yeah, I mean, run some tests and see. Yeah, because this this whole iCloud um, compatibility is very attractive. Um, not that yes, I'm thinking about the it. idea. Yeah, well, the <laughs> idea is, I mean, I'm not going to be recording stuff to the cloud. I mean, forget that. I mean, I'm already no, no, using okay. all this bandwidth for the show. I'm not going to be soaring it up in the cloud. But um, no, even though I'm on fire. No, and by the way, your your video looks much better today. Oh, why, well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think most of those updates were to help kind of patch over the um, now dead totally dead in the ground uh iwork.com yeah and mobile me so, mobile me is gone mobile um, me is totally dead and gone yeah it's sad yeah i like well, it yeah. no icloud is fine uh i wrote up a little bit about it i, I wrote an entire thing about mountain Lion on uh the next con this morning 
Um, I wrote it last night and then I rolled out of bed and just sort of like hit the button and, and posted it. Is that how you post things? Well, no, it's just that I, I did. I couldn't. I couldn't post it. No, I couldn't post it before it actually went live. So, oh, yeah, I, this no, is true. I had to. Uh, I had to wait because I finished it like late last night, and I couldn't post it. And I couldn't put a timestamp on it because I mean, if it didn't come out until eleven, and I mm. and I assumed ten, that would yeah. be good. Yeah, true. Oh, what else? Are we done with the whole mountain lion thing? Well, I think that yeah, pretty much takes care of mountain lion. And all this happened just after Apple's earning call yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, um. <laughs> Despite the crazy, no I mean, Apple always puts out crazy earnings numbers. Yeah, thirty-five billion, billion. in revenue last quarter. Billion with a B. Uh, eight point eight billion in profit for Apple. So good on you guys. Twenty-six million iPhones, seventeen million iPads, four million Macs, and all of this. I mean, despite all of this, their stock still went down about 30 bucks. Yeah, their stock went down 30 because the street, the street, expected a billion dollars yeah. more. Yeah. And they didn't make it. So now, what? Their stock is worth $30 a share less? I, look, this. Worthless. I tell you. Worthless. Just sell your stock right now. <laughs> when I was in junior. It's not the horse your wagon to anymore. <laughs> when I was in junior high, I took a special class for the stock market because. Uh, there, special class? Yeah, yeah, it was a special class. A special class? Okay. It was a, there were a group of six of us. We were like real smart kids. And, and they they pulled us out of, of like certain classes once a week to, to learn about the stock market. To this day, I don't understand it. It's like $20, really $35 billion dollars in revenue, but screw you. We're going to drop your price $30 a share still. It, no it seems to me that um, the street wants its magic pony numbers. And they don't get it, <laughs> and and yeah. it's it's always been like that. Like I've always looked at the the stock market and expected. There, there are certain times when things were obvious, like when Steve Jobs got on stage in '97, and, and and I was there. And then right after that announcement, <clears throat> me and uh, uh, Lindy and, uh, that I do work has with, we, were, we went to Boston together, and we checked the stock of the, of of, uh, of Apple, and it shot through the roof. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. things are kind of obvious, but then there are other times when a company will beat the street and do all these amazing things and give money to charity and and all these wonderful things, and their stock will drop by half. And I just go, oh, yeah. I don't get it. Well, you know, like Apple's stock has always rose on their big announcements, mm -hmm. and it still happens. Like around WWDC, it's it went up. It it always goes up when they have the big announcements, but then it seems like it goes down either around the earnings call or when the products are actually launched. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, but I don't know a lot of things about the stock I know, market. It's like so. 300 billion people <laughs> less bought this thing than expected, so we're going to drop your price. <sighs> anyway, yeah. um, what I've been reading today is, um, and, and it, I was in a uh, discussion about it on, on Google+, Plus just before we started recording, is that people are saying, oh, you know, people aren't buying iPhones this quarter because of Android. No. No, there is um, nothing to prove that. <laughs> there, people are, myself, I, I put aside buying an iPhone 4S specifically because I was waiting for a 5. I didn't want to put myself in a two-year contract with a phone that, was, that only had really Siri. And why do yeah. that when I can just get a 5 in a few months? Because uh, my contract was up, I believe, in February. And so I can mm. I could have gotten a 4S in February, and I said nope, I'm just going to stick it out and then wait until the five. And so yeah. there are a lot of people that are doing that, and I'm not completely ignorant to the fact that yeah, there are some people that want to flip to Android, fine, but I, I don't think it's as many as they're making it out. And in fact, <laughs> there's as many numbers to the contrary as there are to support that. Um, we have this down in rapid fire, but I'll bring it up now. Okay. Uh, AT&T also had an earnings call uh, yesterday or the day before. Mm -hmm. And um, they announced that they, last quarter, alone sold 3.7 million iPhones, representing 73% of all their smartphone sales. That's, uh, oh, and 56% of mm -hmm. their total sales. Yeah. That's like 
crazy. So it's pre- pretty much like three out of four smartphones that they're selling are iPhones. Right. And the other one is obviously going to be Android. So who are all these Android people that are saying that that people are switching to Android? Because right now, the numbers are consistent with the way they've been for pre- mm-hmm. previous quarters. And so... Right. And that's just AT&T. You know, iPhone's on a buttload of carriers now. True. It's not just AT&T anymore. Here's the thing, though. I, I, I don't have any numbers to back this up. This is more of a gut feeling from, from looking at this business for many years is that I have a feeling that Verizon sales, I would bet, um, as many iPhones that they've sold, I have a feeling that, that people that walk into a Verizon store, many may not know the difference between an iPhone and an Android. They just don't know the difference. The, the I don't I don't like to use this word, but the Luddites, the ones that really just don't know the technology in and out like you and I and many other people do, they walk. So you saying they are more Verizon? <laughs> I, no, because you know you know why. In my I should really mention this. In my area, Verizon is by far the the biggest carrier. Mm-hmm. The reason why is because they they do as as much as I despise their business practices. They do have the best signal. I refuse to move to well, them they, because yeah, of their business practices. Yeah, they have practices. better so, signal in most places, so I think. So you see, when you go to the AT&T stores and the Verizon stores, both the, the drive-up stores and the mall stores, there are far, far, far more people that I see in Verizon stores than, than Sprint and AT&T. And in my area, in the New York, New Jersey area, is that AT&T is well-known, Sprint is well-known, but Verizon is just far far superior in terms of of popularity in this yeah i would well yeah i would um like you said i mean their signal is going to be better in more areas so Mm -hmm. i think there's more probably more verizon users total but i don't think there's more like luddite users on verizon than anything else i think there's probably equal amounts of tech savvy people on you know at&t and verizon and even sprint um because, I mean, I go into at and store all the time for work, and I see a plenty of lot of sure. <laughs> milling around in there. Sure. But, but, um, but also remember, at and sold 3.7 million. Let's just round that to four. There are still 22 mm-hmm. million iPhones that are, that are unaccounted right. for in our numbers on our show notes. So those 22 million, I'm sure some of them, most of them probably came from Verizon. Maybe. I would argue that most of them probably came from the Apple store directly. Oh. Because okay, Apple sold okay. the phones, too. Uh, I, you know what it was? I was I was thinking, yeah, carriers and not stores. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Completely didn't think of that. Okay. It's okay. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. All right. Should we move on to rapid fire? Let's move on to rapid fire. <laughs> All right, th- go tell us about this next so interesting tip. This is unprecedented for all you people who say Apple doesn't give a damn about security. Mm-hmm. Apple is actually presenting at the Black Hat Black Hat Security Conference this Thursday. Uh, that's huge, and um, I don't know if it was this article that you linked or if it was another article that I that there I read. Are a few of them, yeah, that said that Apple tried to do this in 2008 until the marketing people got a hold of it and said, "Oh no." You're not doing this. Really? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll probably link hmm. it after after we record. But yeah, Apple tried to do this a couple of years ago and marketing told them, no, 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 no. I wonder why it this. took so long for them to, or unless they've been trying all along. But I mean, that was 2008. That was a while ago. Well, but- I've been trying to, Casey and I were, were both wondering what exactly they're going to present. For those of you that don't know what the Black Hat Security Conference is, it's, it's where the hackers get together and... and talk about ways of, of, of hacking. It's a black hat conference. Mm-hmm. There are people like myself that are like, I would consider myself to be white hat in the sense that I just like to see how things work, but I never do anything with it. Um, for Apple to present at a black hat security conference is huge because A, they don't want their image tarnished, um, and, and, and B, what are they going to talk about? That's what I want to know. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't see anything. any of these reports that actually say what they're going to talk about. Just that they're talking and um, at the conference, and I, I mean, that's news enough, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so. But especially, it kind of feels like amongst all of these. I mean, this last year, they we've seen what 
at least two, if not three, Mac viruses that were pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's probably got a lot to do with it. Um, ne Apple actually has to now, you know, kind of stand up and, um, you know, be a force in, in for security. True. And and to present, see, that's what I'm a little confused about is that they're going to present, like, are they going to present the way they do things, how they want to do things, uh, their their philosophy on doing, I mean, there, there are just so many things that they could yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, true. And um, I, I'd be very interested to, uh, to watch this when it's uh, up on Thursday. Indeed. Yep. I will be looking forward to that. <laughs> Apple says that, uh, or I'm sorry, reports say that Apple is going to sell <laughs> a 30-pin to 19-pin uh, iPhone adapter uh, for the new iPhone 5s. And everybody's up in arms about this today. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Apple is selling an adapter. Look, this is not the first time that Apple has sold an adapter. No. It, well, I mean, look at just a couple of months ago when they put out the Retina uh, MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. it's chock full of adapters. <laughs> uh, we got adapters coming out, whatever. Um, so I mean, I was hoping they were gonna put sell this, but it wasn't for certain. I mean, it hasn't always been the case. Apple has shifted to a new technology or port and not done it adapters. Sure. When the iPod went from FireWire to USB, they didn't sell adapters for that. People who got no. kind of screwed there. No, uh, uh, but what did happen is that Belkin had put out because I still have one somewhere yeah, in the there house. Yeah, third part one. They Apple have, didn't. yeah, they have the, the the thirty pin connector on one end, and then it splits, and then you've got yeah. a FireWire and a USB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they still sell that to this day. Um, uh, either Belkin or Targus or Griffin or one of them. Um, but in any case, Apple didn't. But it's good to know that, I mean, this is really the best uh, solution mm -hmm. to just, you know, sell an adapter. And so, because a lot of people were just freaking out at the news of a 19-pin connector anyways, saying mm -hmm. like, oh, I just bought this freaking alarm clock. Now what am I going to do? I got to go buy another alarm clock. To which I say, A, why are you buying alarm clocks in the first place? You have a freaking iPhone. Yeah. And B... Who cares? They're selling an adapter now. So <laughs> rejoice. Your alarm clock is still good. <laughs> All right. What's this rumor? I did because I've been like busy today. What is this rumor about this this iPad mini? OK, so the latest rumor around the iPad mini and to kind of recap, the iPad mini is this rumored 17 inch iPad or 17 7 Whoa, inch I was gonna iPad. Say. 17 inch iPad. It's the new. Uh, it's a table. IPad. <laughs> it's a table and a floor wax. Um, yeah, no, the new, uh, or they're rumoring a seven inch iPad to compete with, you know, the likes of the Nexus 7 and the ill fated playbook, I'm sure, you know, mm -hmm. huge. Letters. Um, but there's an article, and I forget if it was on TUAW, uh, that kind of narrowed it down because uh, all the other seven inch tablets are the uh 16 by 9 ratio mm -hmm. the wide screen ratio so they're mm -hmm. so they're you know skinny mm -hmm. the latest rumor on the ipad mini is that it's going to keep the ipad's current 4 by 3 ratio oh. so that it's not going to be skinny it's going to be fat really but it's going to be 7 inches but it'll be kind of that fat um proportion size so that it won't be like the other seven inch tablets it'll be a lot bigger looking than the other tablets and won't you know fit in your back pocket or wherever you want to put it probably the, all right this is from a developer's point of view i think the reason why they're doing this is they want to keep the aspect ratio of all their devices the same yeah well uh, if they keep at the four by three ratio, mm -hmm. each retina display will actually be that 10, 24 by 768 resolution that the iPad 1 and 2 were. Mm -hmm. So, really, not change, they don't really have to do a whole lot to create a seven. I mean, it'll be relatively easy, and then developers don't really have to change a whole lot because you've been working with that resolution, you know, for a couple iterations. Mm -hmm doesn't you know it doesn't represent a whole new form factor really mm, okay so oh that, that's a very interesting way of, of looking at it because i had no idea 
that I th- I just assumed that they were going to uh, move to a sixteen by nine or yeah sixteen by nine ratio. Yeah, I think two. a lot of, but in a I mean it it makes sense and it doesn't. I mean I I wouldn't I'd like to see a sixteen by nine, mm-hmm. but I don't. It makes more sense for them to go this route, and especially for like games and and stuff like that. You know, you get more screen real estate. Um, but if the rumors about the iPhone 5 are true, that will be 16 by 9. Mm-hmm. So maybe the iPad 4 or whatever will go to 16 by 9. You know, but we're not going to see iPads doing that this iteration, I think. Yeah. All right. All right, let's move on to apps. And yes, I have actually a clip for that. And I want to know if anybody out there even knows what this is uh, from. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, all right. So for me, all right, I, I want to explain a little bit about why I picked this. Uh, lately, I've been buying albums from a store, um, a website called HDTracks.com, and what they have is um, they have HD versions of uh, HD audio versions of albums. So when you buy a uh, an album, a CD, it's 16 bit, 44 kilohertz. The uh, the albums that they have here are directly from the masters, and so they're 24 bit, 192 kilohertz, or 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. The problem <gasps> is that <laughs> that's a lot. Of so kilohertz. anyway, it's a lot of kilohertz. Uh, <laughs> Um, so the reason, uh, the reason why I need a converter is because, uh, I, I buy the, um, I buy the files in FLAC and iTunes for some reason won't play them. I, I don't know why, because FLAC is an open format. It should play them. Um, it's like OG, um, iTunes doesn't support OG and I don't understand why. So I needed something Apple that it's open. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I needed something that would convert it from FLAC to um, uh, Apple Lossless. And I found this app called Max, M-A-X, that does a very good job of you, of you just drag your files into uh, this this little window and you press go and it just converts everything to whatever you want nice. your, your file format to be. And so I converted them all to AAC, Apple Lossless. And uh, now I can, I can play the FLAC in my... You know, home theater room, and then I can play this uh, the AACs here. So, is this on the Mac App Store, or do you have to go to like the developer's uh, website? You have to go to the developer's website. Uh, it's not on the store. Uh, there is a newer app called All to MP3, uh, which people have been talking about, but I haven't tried it yet. I don't. I don't necessarily want to convert everything to MP3. Um, sometimes I do, and sometimes yeah, I don't. That, no, that defeats the whole point of going lossless well yeah if, if i buy something off a off of a, a website i'm buying studio masters why would i want to convert it to mp3 however um the problem with the, <laughs> with the max app is that it's a little older it hasn't been updated in a while i was actually thinking about writing my own and keeping mm. it up to date so is it mountain lion compatible or just well i don't lion? know but it works on snow leopard just fine and oh ooh. yeah but i I can't see well, an app that basically takes files, runs the files through a library, and spits them out being a problem on Mountain Lion. True, true. So. What's the um, developer's website? Oh, you were going to ask me that, weren't you? Because well, I don't have it in the show been notes. Prepared. I well, guess you're I should have. Are you going to tell people to Google Max and get reliable results? All right, it's, all right. Sbooth.org slash Max with a capital M. I guess if you just go to sbooth.com. Um, there you go. But yeah, so, sbooth.org, org. Org, dot org, I'm sorry, sbooth.org slash capital M, lowercase a-x. Uh, last update was August 29th, 2009. But uh, to this day, uh, if you ask people on forums what to use to convert FLAC to, to anything, they all say Max. Well, well, so, there you go. There you go. Old reliable, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right, so my app is one I just found a couple days ago out of necessity uh, for work. Um, My bosses were going to do a a presentation uh, on a group of iPads. They got 12 iPads, and they were going to pass them out at a show and do a presentation. But what they wanted to do was to be able to 
uh, control, like have everybody watching the presentation on their iPad pads mm -hmm. and then use another ipad to control them all oh. um and so after doing some research i found a nice little app called conference pad it's available for both ipad and iphone it's the same kind of universal version mm -hmm. um it'll work on both platforms so you download it and it'll both um it has to be on all the devices this, this app so you can either be controlled or be the controller through this app. So, so long as the you're all either all of the devices have to be on the same Wi-Fi network, yeah, or all have Bluetooth up and running, um, and all have the app open, you can um, all the devices that are going to be controlled can connect to the one main one, the controller, and then the controller. Uh, has it'll only work with um, PDFs, but it runs through them like a slideshow. All right, well that's not bad. So you have to convert your PowerPoint to PDF. Not a big deal, but um, so you load the PDF into Conference Pad, and then you uh, start the PDF, and it will, regardless if the controlled devices have the PDF or not, it will, you know, force download to all the devices mm -hmm. being controlled, and then they can just sit there and watch. And the controller can flick through it like a slideshow, and it will just go on the oh, other. Nice. Yeah, Very it's cool. uh, it's four ninety nine in the uh, App Store, and um, yeah, it's th it's the best thing out there that I've seen for controlling other iOS devices with an iOS device. So another good thing I was thinking, like if you're trying to teach your older grandma or grandpa how to use an iPad, maybe. You know, you can kind of take control with your own and help them through it. There you go. All right. So there. All right. Are we done? Yeah, a little short show, but um, <laughs> I want to get to uh, playing with mountain lions. So. Oh, uh, do you? <laughs> All right. If you want to contact us, I am at Star Mike on Twitter. Casey, I'm going to get this right this time. Casey Queso, K A C E Y K A S O. The Casey, not the cheese. <laughs> If you want to email us, the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com, and we're at Infinite Loop TV on Twitter, and we're also on the Goog, and we're on the FB. Am I right? Uh, did I get all that right? <laughs> you know what? I, I just realized that uh, the music was drowning you out. I'm sorry. That's okay. Did you say anything important? No. <laughs> that's one thing about skype that um, i have to figure out is that when i inject audio over um it, it drowns out the person on the other end that's very um hand it's very skypish of me isn't it yeah <laughs> all right all right thanks for watching listening we'll talk to you later